All right, so let's look at the third topic, which is VPN configuration. So let's look at the application scenario of the client uh, initializer L2 TP VPN. So here we have a client, uh, this is a PC1, <coughs> the computer or the laptop. Uh, the IP is 20 something something and uh, the client actually goes through internet and tries to connect to the uh, firewall uh, within the uh, headquarters all right this is the headquarters and uh, so this firewall is actually uh, a more technical term is called the lns which stands for the l2tp network server and then on the other side of the firewall is actually the uh, the private ip address which is 10.1.1 something connects to the headquarters so the objective is actually to allow the PC1 to be able to connect to server 1 via L2TP VPN tunnel. So here's the requirement. A company has its own VPN and a VPN gateway, which is a USG firewall. It's deployed at the internet egress of the headquarters. Employees on the move need to communicate with the company's internal server through the L2TP tunnels. So let's look at the configuration procedure. So the first of all, we need to configure the uh, LNS, which is a firewall. And after that, we need to enable the L2TP protocol. And then we need to configure the VT interface, which stands for the virtual templates interface. So within this um, VT interface configuration, we need to first set the IP address. We need to specify the address or the service solution. And then we need to configure the PPP authentication, PEP or CHAP and then we need to add the interface into the right security zone. So these are all mandatory steps. Then next, we need to conf configure to set the L2TP connection parameters. So here we have to set the peer name uh, used for the virtual template interface. And there are two more optional steps, which is to enable the tunnel authentication, which is another encryption, uh, something like another password just for the, the tunnel. And then also optionally to enable the L2TP virtual forwarding. Then after that, we also optionally to configure the LNS authentication solution. And finally, we go to configure the security policy. And after that, um, we will configure the client. So let's look at the steps. This is the USG um, 6330, uh, the web interface. And so the first step is to connect to the network, which is uh, this big icon here. Then we select the uh, L2TP. Then again, L2TP on the submenu. Then after that, step three here, we check the box to enable the L2TP services. Then after that, click apply. Then we need to configure, set the L2TP parameters. So first we specify a name and the type is LNS. We type in the, uh, the just the name for the tunnel and then this is the optional steps. We can choose to enable the tunnel post password authentication and this is like a shared password. Um, so this password, uh, it can be anything. So just fill out the value and after that we set the PPP parameters we can choose PAP or CHAP. So CHAP is always uh, much more recommended over the uh, PAP and also to associate to the uh, untrust zone. And after that, these are the uh, peer IP addresses. We can specify what is the IP range that we want to assign to the, uh, the client the moment they connect to us. Then after that, we need to configure a couple of user uh, accounts. So by doing this, we go to object, then we go to users. This is the object uh, icon. Then we go to users and then we click on the default domain authentication. So um, then after that, the next few steps is um, so user management. We need to configure what type of a user that we're going to uh, set up for. Uh, we're going to configure for the L2TP. Uh, so it's, it's over here. Then after that, we create user account by pressing the add button. And then here it comes to the uh, creation screen. Then here we can type in the username, the display name, description, and password, and etc. etc. 
So we've done the configuration on the LNS site, which is the uh, firewall site. So now, next thing is to configure the uh, client site. Now on the client site, uh, first of all, you need to download this uh, piece of software. It's called the SQL client. And uh, this software can be found uh, on the uh, support the Huawei dot com slash enterprise website under the firewall section you should be able to download this client and then uh, once we double click uh, we install the client then we create the uh, new connection then we select the L2TP IPsec type so in this example it's just l 2 tp without the IPsec so we configure the uh, connection name we type in what is the LNS server address as we mentioned earlier LNS is actually the uh, the firewall IP, then the tunnel name, then the chip authentication, and enable the tunnel authentication if uh, we have already checked the boxes. And okay, then after that, um, you use the VPN to access the following uh, addresses. So this is actually uh, to manipulate our Windows uh, routing that if the Windows client connects to any of the 1011 uh, segment, 10110 segment, uh, the, the traffic will tunnel in through the, the into the VPN. Okay, so after that we need to type in the uh, uh, the username and the password at the uh, login screen, and you press login, and you should be able to connect. Uh, you should be getting an IP address, and after that from there we should be able to ping into the uh, 10.1.1 segment so that's the uh, the client initiated uh, scenario now the second scenario is the uh, GRE scenario now for GRE scenario we are assuming that we have two branches that needs to be connected to each other so uh, we have a network one here which is 10.1.1 segment and another segment here is 10.1.2 segment and uh, we can create a GRE tunnel uh, to allow uh, the two branch to be able to communicate uh, with each other and uh, there's a couple of other appearances that we need to take note um, so the 40 network here is assuming this is the uh, public IP address of uh, two branches and then we have the tunnel ad address which is the 172.16 uh, which is meant for the uh, IP address meant for the tunnel so here's a requirement the two subnets, network 1 and network 2, that runs IP protocol communicate with each other through the GRE tunnel established between the firewall A and the firewall B. So here's the configuration procedure. So first of all, we need to configure the uh, GRE device, and then we need to perform a basic configuration. We need to set the IP address interface. We need to also add the interface into the right security zone. And then we need to configure the tunnel interface and we need to set the IP addresses. If you still remember the IP address, uh, we have a tunnel IP address, which is the 172. We need to set the tunnel protocol. So in this example, it will be the GRE. And we need to set the source and the destination address of the tunnel. And we need to add the interface into the right security zone. Okay, this is for the tunnel. And then we need to configure the uh, the route to the peer. All right. So which is the uh, we call it the destination, the ultimate uh, IP addresses uh, that the uh, from one source to the other destination that we need to configure into the right uh, routing. And finally, we configure the uh, security policy. So here's a configuration example from a firewall A. Um, so we do not show you the example of the uh, firewall B but the uh, configuration will be the exactly the opposite of, uh, of this screen. So first of all, to do this, uh, we go to Network uh, Object, and after that, we click on the GRE, and then we click on GRE, and then we click Add to configure the GRE interface. Then after that, we configure the, the tunnel name. Uh, so this is actually uh, so the uh, the virtual system and the zone. Uh, this is actually to add the, the tunnel, the Jerry tunnel, into the the right security zone. And this is the actually the IP address. We call it the tunnel IP address. So we can use the slash thirty because this is only peer to peer. 
and after that we have the source address uh, configuration all right so remember this is actually the uh, public IP address uh, from your the firewall A site and then to connect to the the public IP address on the firewall B site okay now again uh, if if we were to configure this on the firewall B we will perform something quite similar over here except the uh, I, uh, the tunnel address here will be 10 uh, sorry 172.16.1.2 and then the the, uh, the address the source will be dot two here and the destination will be the dot one okay right then after that we need to configure the uh, static route so once we built the tunnel interface and the next thing we need to go to the static route and to to specify if we would to visit the destination uh, address we will put this uh, traffic into the tunnel okay so this example of this is if it's a firewall a we need to configure if uh, there's a user wanted to visit the uh, destination address of uh, another destination or uh, maybe the 10.1.2 10 10 uh, segment and we'll put this into the into the tunnel okay so again we will do the opposite side uh, if it's from firewall B uh, so firewall B if you want to visit the destination of the firewall A uh, of, of the, sorry the network A network 1 and we will also put the traffic into the tunnel 1 interface now the name of the interface can be the same because uh, this is actually only significant to the uh, uh, the individual uh, firewall right so to, to verify the configuration very simple we need to actually perform a ping test from uh, a PC uh, within network 1 and network 2 to make sure that they are able to ping each other and also uh, a router whose the outbound interface is tunnel 1 and is designated for the 10120 can be found so this is actually by uh, observing the routing table of the firewall A right. the next scenario is the point-to-point uh, -point IPsec uh, VPN scenario so this is also a scenario where we, we want to connect uh, two networks uh, by using the IPsec tunnel instead of the GRE tunnel. So here's the example, uh, the IP address, the I, uh, the one dot something, the one dot one uh, dot something IP address represents the public IP address, and again we have the one dot ten dot one dot two, ten dot one dot one here represents the uh, the internal network of the uh, of the both branches. So here's the requirement. Um, network 1 and network 2 are interconnect through the IPsec tunnel established between the firewall A and firewall B and the default value in IPsec and uh, IKE proposal are used and also the uh, IPsec tunnel is established in the IKE mode so here's the configuration procedure so first we need to configure a point-to-point -point IPsec uh, VPN the tunnel then we need to configure the route okay so you can see that every time it cannot uh, we have to configure the, the specific route and also we need to configure the inter zone security policy okay and then we need to configure the IPsec IKE security proposal and also to configure and apply the IPsec uh, the policy so here's the step uh, the first step so first of all we go to a uh, network uh, icon and we go to the uh, route static route we add a new static route and this is example from a firewall A so from a firewall A we will connect we want to go to destination 10.1.2 and the next hop is actually the uh, 40.1.1.2 which is the uh, public IP address so here's the interzone security policy so we will need to allow uh, the, uh, the the security policy, the ports number, to be able to pass through. Uh, so here we will configure a couple of uh, policy here. Uh, we call it IPsec one, IPsec two, IPsec three, and IPsec uh, four. All right. So and this is to be configured at the firewall A site, and these are the policy to be configured at the firewall B site. So this is actually to configure four different uh, uh, security policy so here's the actually example to to follow through 
and uh, first of all we configure uh, from direction trust to untrust uh, zone the source address the destination address so we specify a very particular address only and the action here is to allow okay and the next one is uh, direction between untrust to trust this is the return traffic the return uh, uh, direction now on the firewall B side you would expect to see the opposite uh, IP address configuration and the next one is to allow the IKE negotiation packet to pass through so this is actually to configure a local to untrust okay so can you see this so local to untrust means the firewall itself needs to communicate with the uh, untrust zone okay so that means we allow the uh, source which is coming from the public IP address of the firewall A itself and to connect to firewall B okay so here's the example on the opposite side and and for the uh, IPsec4 policy, we configure the opposite. So if if the our neighbor firewall B try to connect to us, which is firewall A, using the public IP address, uh, now apologize of the uh, the previous uh, scenario, which show us the uh, IP address, which is the one. So this is actually supposed to be a 40. Okay. Right. So this is actually to allow the. Uh, IKE uh, negotiation process. So the firewall B will configure the uh, opposite uh, IP address, the reverse IP address. All right. So here's the uh, next one is to configure the uh, IPsec uh, uh, policy uh, parameters. So again, this is to be done at the firewall A site. Uh, this is again go to the uh, network. We click on the uh, IPsec uh, selection. We go to the site-to-site uh, -site scenario, and then we click on site-to-site -site scenario, and then we configure the uh, uh, some of the basic uh, parameters. So first of all, we configure the name, the policy name, uh, which of our public interfaces that we're going to establish the uh, IPsec, and then what is our local address, and what is the peer IP address. Now this again is the uh, public IP addresses. And after that, the uh, pre shared key uh, between the two networks. Uh, so we can specify an, an any uh, like a password value. So this value has to be the same on the other side. So and same thing, the local ID, peer ID, we basically just follow the uh, public IP address value. Now on the firewall B side, we will configure the opposite. So first of all, we do something similar like this. Uh, make sure that the local interface refers to the firewall B, uh, the internet interface, and then we have the local address and the peer address. Uh, this two will be the uh, opposite value. Then after that, we will configure the uh, encrypted uh, data flow. Right. So this is actually the uh, uh, to add the we call it the interesting traffic. So which interesting means the uh, the traffic which we wanted to perform the uh, IPsec to, to be encrypted. Uh, so here we will specify uh, if any uh, IP address coming from the source 1011 something to 1012 something segment, um, any protocol regardless. So the action here is going to be uh, encrypted. Okay, so then we add. So if you have uh, an, uh, other traffic, we need, we need to add it here. And do remember before this, we also need to configure the uh, policy as well. Then finally, we will apply the IPsec policy. Uh, click on the button here and to click on the uh, apply. Okay, so we come to the end of this uh, chapter. So let's talk about two uh, quiz questions. So question number one, IPsec uses asymmetric encryption algorithm to encrypt user data for ensuring confidentiality of transmitted information. Is it true or false? Answer is false. Now IPsec uses a symmetric. Uh, so they, they shared the same username and the password. Oh, sorry, they shared the same uh, pre shared key uh, perform the uh, encryption. Uh, number two, which of the following are the main functions of the SSL VPN of the UHG 6000 series firewall. 
Um, so SSL VPN, um, that means we can use the uh, port uh, 443, uh, perform the HTTPS, and we can actually perform port forwarding. Uh, answer A is correct. We can also perform network extension, which is also similar like the uh, VPN, L2TP VPN kind of scenario. We can also perform file sharing, which we can share all the files. Uh, we can actually use the USG firewall to map into one of the CIFS uh, shared folder and then from there to allow our mobile user to connect to our SSL gateway and to actually browse using the HTTPS to browse into the uh, CIFS uh, file server and, here, and using this method we can do the file sharing and finally the web proxy uh, yes, it's true as well. So web proxy means we can actually encrypt any of our web pages. Let's say we have an intranet web server which is unencrypted, uh, only runs through HTTP uh, protocol, and we can also make use of the SSL VPN appliance to make it HTTPS. Uh, so it's, it becomes like a proxy, the middleman. So any traffic uh, that any user want to browse into the intranet, they need to first connect to our SSL VPN appliance, uh, which is the firewall itself can be the SSL VPN, and to encrypt all the HTTPS traffic. So answer is A, B, C, D. So here's a summary of this uh, chapter. So we actually spoke about the application of the cryptography technologies uh, we spoke about basic concepts of the VPN. Uh, we spoke about the mechanism of the GRE VPN and also the L2 VP, L2TP VPN. We also talk about the IPsec VPN encryption and decryption and also the verification. We also went through the uh, configuration process of the different types of the VPN. Right, so thank you for listening.